So, I would suggest now that, you know, questions have come up among us. Perhaps we can sit with some of those questions. We don't have to be experts. We can sit with them. There's nothing in particular right now that's coming up for me. I suppose I've been a bit focused on the practical details today. I'm afraid my question is... If you haven't yet contributed to the, the $10 cost for the, for the tea, I'm so sorry to drop this in, but I'll get it out now. It would be great if, if we could do that, because before we leave today, we need to just pay um, Bruce and Helena for that. Koha is an optional extra, but if you haven't, um, or if you were able to contribute $10 or whatever you can to the catering, that would be great. That's not a question. It's um, a hobby. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's all good. Thank you. So, questions. Is there an island we can set up where we all go? And... <laughs> I think it's called New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> is that the best option? There's two islands. Yeah, is that the best option? Should we get a like minded people together who want to work in a real community? and create like a village yes. so we can protect our offspring going forward. I don't need that. That's a talking stick. <laughs> talking stick. I suspect there will be habitat for humans longer in New Zealand, South Africa, the southern end of South America, and in near coastal southern Australia than just Tasmania. about any place else on, on the planet. Yeah, Tasmania, but not interior Tasmania because, you know, it's pretty much all burned up. I did say once in a meeting that I thought the Maori might be the last race living on the planet, partly because they might eat more people. <laughs> no comment. When we come to that stage, we people to become. Can we keep the comments a little more appropriate than that? Thank you. But is that? Do you reckon that's a long-term option that there will be enclaves of of humans that collectively get together and decide, right, the end days are here, but let's let's drag it out as long as we possibly can. We don't give up as a rule. We are we are struggling and fighters and. I think there are people already doing that. Yeah. Out of my village in the South Island. Yeah. I would like to offer another viewpoint, which I heard on the radio at lunchtime today. Oh, yeah. yeah. About people getting together in little enclaves, and this was a Dutch scientists talking about um, working together with other scientists in Holland to uh, find out which potatoes are tolerant of um, a certain amount of salinity in the water. And they have, they have managed to find and, and develop potatoes um, which are very tolerant to, to salinity and they are taking those potatoes um, very soon to Pakistan, to the farmers who live near the sea. Selective breeding rather than... As yeah. far as I understand it, so nice. yes, selective breeding. Mm -hmm. and there, there have been these, these groups, commonly disparaged as survivalist groups or communes preppers. since the 1960s, or preppers. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a land trust just a mile up the road from where I live that is shared by about a dozen people on 19 acres, and they grow a significant amount of their own food and they have solar pump to get the water out of the ground and so on. Um, and, and the people changes periodically. People can come and go. They need consensus to get in. I don't think they need consensus to get out. I think people can leave when they want. It's not the Hotel California. <laughs> or Scientology. Right, or Scientology. Um, so there have been these groups that have been around for a long time, um, trying to encourage people to live 
in, in a decent manner with small groups of people. There's, there's all any number of, quote, eco-villages in the United States and Europe. And if you go to IC.org, IC stands for Intentional Community. There's a tremendous, it must be thousands of groups of intentional communities that are living with a certain set of intentions. Right, so they want they insist upon having solar panels or wind turbines or no grid tied electricity or any number of, of things that bring together this group of people living intentionally. Some of them are based on religion, some of them aren't. Yeah. I, just, I hope I'm not coming in left field, but uh, I just um, remembered something that I thought was quite relevant because, um, in a way, yeah, we often have the tendency to talk about what is the right thing to do, and I think that's uh, the right thing is for every single individual to d decide. And I, I just recalled, I think it was something recently that um, Chris Hedges, the, the journalist in the United States, had to say he was talking about um, the necessity for, for, for resistance, and I mean, he's been quite active in. Uh, in Occupy, and he's been arrested several times, and he described this, and then just almost as a, an aside, he said, I'm not naive enough to think that any of this is going to work, yeah. be successful. And I think that's quite an important um, kind of little um, nuance that we should remember. <laughs> We have a, uh, a support group uh, called uh, NTHE, Near Term Human Extinction Support Group on Facebook. And um, we have these discussions on a daily basis in that group where people are sounding each other out, coming up with ideas and having discussions about this. And um, it's, the, it's the most empathetic and um, good group to be in of any of the Facebook groups I've been involved in over the years. And it sounds weird, but it's an incredibly positive group. Because people, most people are embracing it from the, from the point of view that forearmed is forewarned. You know, the story that we believe is unfolding before our very eyes is a catastrophic story. But we're going in, into it eyes wide open. And that gives us time to think and to strategize and to um, prepare. And that's a much better system than being hit by a bus. And a lot of people are going to get hit by the proverbial bus. So if anyone's interested, have a look at Near Term Human Extinction on Facebook, and uh, you'd be most welcome to join. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have yeah. any join. Yeah. Mr. Hedges also said it's, the problem isn't civil disobedience, it's civil obedience. Mm -hmm. That is the issue. And that's, that's where we are now. He was, he was quoting Howard Zinn. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to address this hope thing. Can I not use it? Is that alright? Yes. Yeah. It's the token anyway, it doesn't work. Right, okay, I'll just use what I was given then. But um, just in terms of the hope thing that um, in my 20s, when I felt like there was no hope, I basically cried all day. And um, <coughs> that sort of changed for me um, when I just made a choice to think that there was hope. And um, you know, I've always done um, environmental action or, I guess, socialist action or whatever, but the feeling around it is really different if I believe that it, there's a point to it. And um, the point is that, not, not that I'm going to save the planet, because I agree with what everything you say, but it's a really personal journey about what, what you said, that what I can do with this. Do it anyway, you know, and actually this is all that I have any control over. And it's a little bit about what I um, spoke before um, about my kids, you know, just being the way that I am. And yeah, we're different. We do things differently from their peers at school or whatever. But um, I guess I just spent so long denying the reality of how I felt and the feeling behind it that actually having hope really works for me. <laughs> so um, actually for me it was, it was about... A spiritual experience, and, and I'm a scientist, I have a master's in science, but actually looking at nature and how things work, and looking at the stars and the awe that I feel when I look at the night sky, the awe that I feel when I look at chromosomes, and my, you know, like I'm going to call it God. I'm sorry, people, you know, I'm just that we've got hijacked, but 
for me that was a really big thing and, and I Pam asked some questions and I want to know from you about God. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! <laughs> one note from me about God. Okay. And I'm not talking about the one that got hijacked and dressed up in robes. And that one. Is there I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the one that made the stars. You know, I'm talking about the one that um, that the kōkaku sings. I'm talking about the one that I feel in here when I connect with someone in this room right now. You know, that's what I'm. T that all Indigenous cultures have. That actually white people have too, they just denied it for so long. I so think might, that's... There might be um, a, a little um, uh, a, a bit of difference in the way the word hope is actually being said and understood. And people often use it in different ways. You're, you seem to be addressing hope as um, the, the, the arrival of, of a vision and, and, and a spirit and a sense of wonder and a sense of beauty mm. and that sort of thing. And people often call that hope. And that isn't the hope. Which is contaminated by fear and 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 by wishful thinking and yeah. by fantasizing yeah. and that sort of thing. So that's just the way the word is used. It's used in quite. That's all ways. it is, and that's why I use the God word because I'm sick of it being hijacked from what it actually that all indigenous that all cultures actually have. And actually, I get hope and stoke. I get that absolutely. Mm -hmm. The hope and you know, with our action, I get it absolutely. But for me. It was a big change between spending days crying about injustice to actually thinking, yeah, it's worth it. You, you know, use this for whatever it is that you... Anyway, that's, that's actually my only question. It's no. a bit secretive, but, you know... Another open-minded believer in God over here as well. That's two <laughs> probably in the room. Is God going to save us? Is God going to save us? Oh, no, God can save us. I'm talking about the human spirit. Uh, that's that's yeah. what Bruce said. It's in us, it's out of us, it's around us, it's in the kōkaka, it's... There is something there. I, I'm a scientist. I love science. I revere it. But there's some, What is fire? What is electricity? What is water? We don't we really know. Electrons in a conductor. No, no, no. Get yeah. further down. Get further past his boat. Get down further. It's not a good subject. Get really, really far down. We don't know. We the answer don't know. is the question. What's that? The answer kills the question. The question opens the door. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. To so, or awesome, the word awesome, Keep which is being hijacked. Yeah. Hold on to the yeah. question. Don't settle for the answer. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my whole so life hope I'm wrong. Yeah. For me, it's the only question, actually. If you want to get radical, meaning to get to the root, the word spirit, the root word, is synonymous with wind. So if you want to take spirit, it's spiritual, down to its root, down to its most basic meaning, it's a wind. It's the, it's the natural world. It's yeah. nature. Yeah. I'm thinking from the earliest. Brief, as in wind, you know, brief being a fundamental life. Yeah, for us. For us. But, but, you know, looking for... Mm, whatever you want to call that thing that you call God mm -hmm. is a prescription for division. Mm -hmm. And so I try not to go there mm -hmm. because people have asked me from the very beginning when I was doing public speaking, do you believe in God? Are you an atheist? These kind of questions. And I would never answer. I would say, however I answer that, it's going to divide us. And we have plenty of things to divide us already. So let's not go there. Let's look for our similarities, not our differences. Because one of the things that, that this culture does really well is reinforces the differences, allows us, encourages us to find the other in others. And so let's find what, what bonds us, what brings us together, and not what tears us apart. Who can look at a photo from the Hubble telescope and not be in awe? Yeah, we call it the sky, for me. Yes. That, like, like Socrates did. He just yes. started looking at the sky. Yes. Like, wow. Yes. Amazing. Imagine he's depending on the Hubble telescope photos. What's it? Imagine what he would have thought of the Hubble telescope photos. <laughs> the awe. I mean, you, you must be in awe when you see what the universe really is. For me, it was life changing to change our belief system around, um, and like I said, love science, mm -hmm. but it was a dead end as opposed to thinking there's something beyond that. For me, it was a, it was a game changer. Yeah. I like the Monty Python song about our place in the universe. Yeah, Monty song. It's, 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 it's
It's amazing. We, we have the words all screwed up, though. You know, we say awesome. Yeah. As if it's a big thing, it, awesome. And we say awful. Is it full of awe? Is a bad thing? It's weird. We get those turned around. I think we should start calling things that are full of awe that inspire us with awe. We should call those awful. <laughs> <laughs> and things that are just and yeah, yeah, they're awesome. St. <laughs> Paul's Cathedral was described as monstrous, terrible, and awful under the old meanings of those words. <laughs> I think once you've found that hope, because I can understand the crime, and I mean, I've had, you know, the, the, for me personally, getting depressed about everything and feeling bogged down about the magnitude of the issue that we're facing. But once we've touched on the hope and the awesomeness of the world we're living, then, you know, for me, the next process was taking action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and sharing, sharing that. Sharing That's that. the difference. Yes. But I did the action without. The hope, and it just didn't, it was just, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Is I, it, I can understand. Is it focus then? Because mm -hmm. focus enlarges. So is it um, that you you focus your energies into the ac action in the direction you wanted to go instead of just hoping, you know? Hey, it's that you said you put it into action, that's what changed it. So you would have had a focus. Um, and I was just saying earlier today, it's like, Backward, I mean, I was an engineer. Backward engineering is is how a lot of things, are, you know, the Japanese were the best at it, and obviously the Chinese are pretty good at it now. You could almost go, this is what we want, and now let's backward engineer that to, in, in a personal sense, of course, it has to start, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, that's how I sort of understand, and what I meant by hope is don't, most people just hope, they hope that someone else is going to do it, they hope that mm -hmm. it might happen. But um, yeah, that's sort of where I was coming from more is it's, it's the focus that jumps you into that action and then, you know, and you're focused on the end result. We, want, we focus on what we want, not what we don't want. And that's why some of these protests, protesting what is on offer is feeding your energy into it <coughs> and on a subconscious level, which is a creative level, isn't it? Is that, would that be... Well, there's intention, isn't it? Yeah, there's intention. What about hope and determination? What's the difference? If you're determined to get a certain outcome, is that not... I think we're talking about the processes we go to to, make, to, to put into action the, the, what we're dealing with with the climate change. But I'm an, I'm an engineer, and I have dogged determination given a project. And that's what I'm not well known for. I do not fail because of my dogged determination. Yeah. Not my hope, right. my dogged determination. And yeah. I bring all my skills to bear on any given pro problem. And that's, this is just another problem, on a grandiose scale. One thing to add to it, I know I used to ride motocross, and I used to ride motocross too. Now, that is instant, it is instant. You focus where you want to go. The split second you focus somewhere else and that's over. You end up there. And, and so there it is working, but at a, at a I don't know, how was it? At a, a instant, um, instantaneous. instantaneous reactive state or whatever. Um, I'm not best with my words, but yeah. So when you're racing, you never look where you don't want to go because you end up there in a pile. I don't think, um, as I say, I did a Masters in Science, and you have to be pretty hard-working and dogged to do oh, it, and like, you're on a science degree, and you have to dot your I's and cross your T's. I did genetics, so um, you can't really make mistakes. Yeah. Um, but um, for me, it was about doing something for the greater good, mm. you know, and actually the community, and that's kind of the point, is... Um, it's actually not about tiny old men who's a speck on a speck on a speck. It's actually about, it's not even about the human race. It's actually about God. It's actually about something more, you know, courage, those things that you see as piety. It's actually about Socrates, something I can't Christmas. even put words to, to be honest, you know, and I just call it God because it seems to be a really good fit and um, I'm not scared of that word anymore. Um, and so it was about not just um, what can I do? Oh shit! I'm just you know what am I going to do? And oh, that didn't work. And ugh, you know it was about actually I'm going to do this anyway because it feels really good. Yeah. And that great guy, wow, he's doing really good stuff too. Yeah. And that just uh, it was 
really great, you know. And I feel like the time is right for, um, I don't know, something bigger. Yeah, yeah. 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 The University of Auckland wrote something with resources for activists in the title about psychology and climate change and stuff that I only read the first chapter of. Sizzle? Sizzle, yeah. Uh, about, about psychology and yeah. coping with yeah. stuff that's like cognitive dissonance. And energy, my, it's all energy. It, my, problem know, with, it's all yeah, my problem with hope is that it leads to more children. <laughs> and there's no hope for a child born today. My daughter's name's Hope. Yeah, well, there you go. Not yeah. accidentally. <laughs> The population of planet seven point seven. The population of planet seven point one to seven point two five billion at the moment. It can only cope with maybe there's figures of three hundred million at most <coughs> back when the planet had an environment suitable for humans. We're heading for a, a bottleneck. I don't know, it seems to be like we're firing a shotgun and a pellet to our babies at this bottleneck, which is peak oil and, and resource depletion. What we don't realise, and we're hoping that the babies are going to get through the bottleneck and we're going to have people at the end, other end of it. But there's a cork in the bottle called climate change. And all these kids are coming smack up against it. Every child born today is going to hit that cork before they're 25, if they're born today. Some, at, at 20, before 25, they're going to be struggling to find a Can we be a little water. sensitive about this uh, subject at the moment, mate, please, for two reasons that are in the room? Because mothers 